everybody, thank you so so much for tuning in. Today's video is another dupe video and I'm going to be duping some of my Michaels favorites using mostly Dollar Tree material. Whatever is not from Dollar Tree is still a dollar and super easy to find. And I think that these would make excellent gift options since gift giving season is creeping up on us. So another thing that is super helpful for gift giving season is Shop Tagger. I mention them in every video where I make major expenses because they are just so amazing and save you so much money, just like a personal shopping assistant. So let me show you how to use Shop Tagger and then we'll get right into the video. On Google Chrome, you're gonna to wanna to go on shoptagger.com and sign up. It's super easy. You can use Facebook or your email and then you're gonna get this cute little button. And there are tons of stores that you can shop from directly from the website. But if you don't want to be on the website, you can always just go on your own site like target.com. And once you find an item that you like, this little shop tagger option is going to pop up and it's going to let you save it to any list that you've created. Now you can always pick when it notifies you. I usually ask for any price change and it notifies me immediately through email or text. And to create a list, it's really simple. Just click new and type your list. It is shareable. Another cool option is that once you're ready to check out, ShopTagger will try and find a coupon code for you. So you're always getting the best price and it does suggest items that are similar. So be sure to check out ShopTagger. The link will be in my description and thank you so much to ShopTagger for sponsoring this video. Also, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button because once you hit that subscribe button, we instantly become best friends. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Let's get right into the video. My first dupe is a $34 scale, which is the one that inspired the original scale in the first place. Thank you so much to everybody who's tagged me in all your recreations. I appreciate you so much. In the original video, I used something like this, but this time I think I'm gonna use a Dollar Tree coaster and I painted this beautiful blue. Now I did spray paint them separately because I noticed that you get a lot less glue gunk when you spray paint separately. So I went ahead and added my E6000 and like the original tutorial, I pushed it all the way back instead of in the middle. Now I used these clocks in the first video, but you can always use something like this. I found this for $3 at Walmart. I'm keeping it simple. So I'm just going to take a jar lid and trace the clock just so I can have it fit. And then I'm gonna cut it down. Now in the original video, I put the clock on the outside of the lid, but this time I'm gonna put it on the inside. On Instagram, I was tagged in a lot of recreates and people pushed the clock back and I thought that looked so much better. So thank you so much. So I did the same thing. I just pushed it all the way back and then I did the same thing, which is write my logo, which is Money Co. You can write whatever you want, or you can even use a stencil or leave it blank. And then I snipped off one of the little hands and added some hot glue to the 12 and six so that it's nice and straight when I add it. This time around, instead of using a trinket tray, I'm gonna go ahead and use this bowl, which I found in the kitchen section of Dollar Tree. You can glue it down or keep it as is, and then you can fill it with all your goodies and you have a really affordable faux scale. The next one is this $40 Michaels kitchen sign. I saw this sign at Dollar Tree and I immediately thought of it. It isn't as big, but it definitely is the exact same shape. So I wanted to make something reversible. I grabbed my Dollar Tree sanding sponge and I sanded off all of that glitter, but you can skip this step if you wanna keep it. You can always just hold your glitter in place using Mod Podge, which is what I'm gonna end up doing anyway because I couldn't get all of the glitter off. I tried and tried and there was always just some extra gunk. To seal off those little holes, I used my Dollar Tree lightweight spackle and I added it to these little holes. I do this in my tutorial where I show you how to transfer fonts without a Cricut and I am gonna reference that later on for this same tutorial. So I'm gonna add a generous amount and make sure it's not seeping through the back and it's covering everything. And I'm removing the sticker using my Cricut scraper tool and sanding it down just a bit with my sanding sponge. I measured it out so I can make a nice stencil for this. And now I'm gonna seal the back with Mod Podge so that glitter doesn't continue to get all over the place. The Mod Podge and the sponge are from Dollar Tree as well but you can leave it as is. Like I said, it's up to you and what you have available. 
Once that's completely dry, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna make sure that my little areas are dry and then I'm gonna cover this using cobalt blue. You can use whatever shade of blue you want. This is a little bit more vibrant than the original, but I really love this shade. I did three coats of this cobalt blue and I let it dry really well between coats and now I'm gonna create a stencil. But if you do not have a Cricut, you can use all of the fonts that I am using using the font.com. Just put it onto an app called Fonto and once you have what you like, just print it out. Put some chalk on the back of your stencil or your paper and then you're gonna put it on your surface and trace it out using a pen or pencil. This is gonna allow you to paint on or draw on whatever design you're transferring. I will leave the original video link to this. I know some people are tired of seeing this footage, but I have been using my Cricut a lot and I don't wanna leave those that don't have one out. After the chalk transfers, just use your paint pen, marker, or paint, and go. Now these are the fonts that I'm using for my stencil. You can get them for free on thefont.com for personal use, and if you are going to be using these for commercial, you do have to buy a license. Now I am going to be using my Dollar Tree book cover and Dollar Tree contact paper to make this stencil. I've been obsessed with doing this lately because it just saved me so much money, and look how well everything transfers. I'm going to make sure everything is perfectly adhered and I'm going to use my favorite chalk paint in the shade Sheepskin and this Dollar Tree foam brush and I'm going to start patting on the color lightly using an up and down motion rather than side to side. You can also do a thin layer of Mod Podge underneath if you want to avoid some bleeding and then I'm going to remove the stencil and this is probably the most satisfying part of the project. I don't know why I just love doing this. And then I'm going to weed out these little extra parts. The Michael sign is distressed and does have a line going around it. And I realized I didn't add that to the stencil. So I'm going to leave it as is. But I really do love that it is reversible. So you can use it whenever you want. And you have this cute little kitchen sign. My next dupe is this memo board. Now for this, I did use the 97 cent stir sticks these come three to a pack and you can get them at lowe's i prefer to get them at lowe's because they are thicker and they have that ruler which comes in really helpful so i'm going to line up 11 of them yes 11 i'm making this nice and wide now remember three come to a pack so for this entire project i'm only going to use six packs and now i'm going to grab another stir stick make sure that it's nice and straight and i'm going to measure the width of these 11 stir sticks now I'm gonna end up marking this and cutting it down. I'm gonna actually cut down six of them. The goal here is to cover up the handles so I can get as much height as possible. So these are the ones that I cut off from the top. It's gonna take three to cover all of the handles. Before adding any glue to this, I am gonna figure out the placement because I do wanna make sure that all the handles are covered, but I also wanna make sure that it is nice and straight so I'm just moving things around and then I'm gonna adhere it using my Gorilla wood glue. Now you can use whatever adhesive you want, but just make sure that it is nice and straight. And for this, I am using two stir sticks on the side just to make sure that the sticks aren't moving out of place. I'm adding a generous amount of glue starting from the bottom and working my way up to the top. I cut down six of these. So for the other piece, I'm gonna glue that on to the bottom making sure that it is nice and straight. And I'm gonna let this dry really well before flipping it over. But when I do flip it over, I'm going to add a stir stick to the top and to the bottom. Now for the back, I am gonna add screws to these. Now I'm just adding tiny little screws. These are a dollar a piece. I'm drilling pilot holes first and then I'm screwing them in. Make sure that you're using small screws so that it doesn't go through the wood and make sure that it is nice and tight. You can add these to all the planks or just to whatever you want or none at all. And now I'm gonna grab one more piece. So I guess I used seven. I completely forgot about this piece and I want this to be elevated. So I'm using the Jenga pieces from Dollar Tree and I cut two of them down to the width of that plank. So I'm going to add some of my Gorilla Wood Glue to each side just to basically create a little elevated piece and you'll see why in a second. So I'm gonna stain this separately so it's easier for me to stain. 
You don't have to stain your project, at least not with traditional stain. You can always use watered down paint to stain it, coffee, or just paint it one solid color to save some money. To be able to get the perforation lines, I'm gonna use this old wax paper. This is from Dollar Tree, but you can get use whatever you have. And I'm gonna remove that little aluminum strip. I used regular scissors for this. And I'm gonna place this on the little piece that I created, make sure that it is slightly exposed, and then attach it using hot glue. Now, you are going to place this face down. It's gonna be at the bottom of the board so that your craft paper perforates nicely. So to attach this, I'm gonna use my Gorilla Wood Glue, but you can use a brad nailer or whatever you have and let it dry really well. Now, for the top, you have a few options. You can either use this, which I found at Dollar Tree, but to use this, you would have to cut your craft paper down and roll it around this because you can't exactly take this apart to put a roll in. Now you can also use this universal tool hanger thing, which I found at Dollar Tree, but in order to use it, you do have to cut it down. So you do need some tin snips. So for this, I opted for these hooks. And this shovel from Dollar Tree, which I just unscrewed the actual shovel part and used this piece, which was the perfect size. I made sure to mark where my hooks were going to go, and then I drilled some pilot holes and just screwed it into place. I painted my stick black just to match the hooks, and now you can either use the Dollar Tree craft paper. I had some craft paper on hand already that I didn't have to cut down, but if you are using the Dollar Tree one, you are going to have to cut it. I have seen Mama from scratch successfully cut it down, and look how awesome this is. For the back, if you do plan on hanging it, you can get a sawtooth hanger and drill it into the back. This little piece is completely optional. I had it left over from another project and I'll link these below, but I hot glued it in place and when I was done, I had an amazing memo board and it was so affordable as well as my other projects. And I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Be sure to check out Chop Tagger. The link will be in my description. And as usual, thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate you so much and I will hopefully see you on the next one.